So Starbucks, founded in 1971 in Seattle, is one of the sorry, it's one of the largest uh, coffee chain in the world. And entering into Beijing in 1999, it is China. It is now the second largest market for Starbucks. And from 2000 to 2008, Starbucks experienced ups and downs uh, in Chinese in the Chinese market. And then, in the past eight years, it grew rapidly and prosperously. And how is the future going to be like? And today, we're going to talk about the next eight years of Starbucks in China. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're from Macau Polytechnic Institute. And my name is Luna. These are my teammates, Casper, uh, Kratos, and Sisi. So um, let's firstly have a look at our goals. Um, currently, we have 2,000 stores um, in Chinese markets. And we want to reach um, uh, 3,400 stores by 2019, and then by 2024, we want to reach 600 to 6,000 stores in the Chinese market. And also, we now have 40% of transactions completed online, and this is far uh, below our requirements and desire. We want to reach 40% of these transactions online by uh, 2019 and then 80% by 2024. Firstly, let's have a look at uh, our challenges and potential obstacles. Firstly, quality control. This is a big problem for all the foreign chains entering into the Chinese market. Um, for example, the KFC have, intended, have encountered um, problem chicken uh, and created um, a big scandal uh, in the recent years. And um, it, it is because the unique Chinese background. Um, many Chinese suppliers um, are trying to speculate for um, lower costs, and they're always try, trying to produce lowest quality with um, the, the lowest cost, and they don't care about the quality. Um, However, for Starbucks, we have a better relationship with the, uh, its suppliers. And uh, many of its coffee comes from the province of Yunnan, where I was born. And um, they, the farmers actually uh, think that the profits for growing coffee is more than growing tea, and which provide us an opportunity to make a bargain with them. Um, to, to give them more pressure to produce higher quality coffee beans. Uh, and next is um, the decreasing customer sat satisfaction of uh, Starbucks. Um, for Chinese people, uh, our, we have a firm um, preference for tea rather than coffee. Uh, however, the th things are beginning to change. Uh, the young generations are now actually preferring to consume coffee rather than tea. And um, Starbucks is also producing and providing localized products. And also, um, the age group differences uh, is going to be significant uh, in, the following, in the following future. And there, the consumer base is going to grow bigger and bigger. And this is a great potential growth for, uh, for Starbucks. And also, uh, in, uh, in, uh, with respect to the experience, uh, many Starbucks shops in Chinese market is now very crowded all the time. No matter uh, on weekdays or weekends, you always have to wait in big lines um, up to uh, half an hour or even an hour, just waiting in lines. And uh, it, it is also really crowded. Especially on weekends, when you're trying to find a place to sit down with your friends for a chat, uh, when you walk past Starbucks, it's always crowded and no place to sit. Um, and also, we are now uh, getting used to the looks of Starbucks everywhere, and the stores are all the same, so um, we might get bored of um, all the stores, and these are the things that we can change. And 
lastly, um, Starbucks is actually falling behind the digital revolution. Um, for example, the payment method is rather limited right now. It's only, um, it can only provide uh, WeChat pay. And for example, when a customer went to Guangzhou, uh, he found out that he cannot use Alipay um, to uh, pay for his Starbucks drinks. Uh, but they only receive uh, cash, uh, cre uh, bank cards, and also uh, WeChat Pay. Uh, but now all the big chains, like KFC, McDonald's, they all accept all these uh, online payments methods. Uh, and also, their uh, mobile app is actually really limited in functions, uh, which only provides you a QR, uh, Q QR code uh, for your um, account account number and also you can only um, you can you can only uh, store your uh, buying uh, purchasing uh, records in, in the app and nothing else and also it doesn't provide delivery service on the mobile app or uh, anywhere else so this is also a place that we can uh, improve in the future so we present you our three strategies of ensure quality, improve experience, and also digitalize our service um, in these um, different aspects. And now creators and customer will explain more details of the strategy. So, in the first strategy is about ensuring the quality of our product and services. Uh, so, as you may, uh, as you have already heard from my uh, teammate, he mentioned about, as uh, she mentioned about the KFC scandal, and we want to ensure our uh, our growth, uh, our growth in the uh, long term will not be affected by such a scandal. Therefore, we want to uh, employ a strategy in the short term to make sure that we don't uh, run into such problem. So we want to enhance the supervision of each stop. Uh, we have uh, three methods to do so. First is by using, first is by using a, a more rigorous contract term with our uh, uh, raw material supplier. For example, we want to make sure all the profit beams that are uh, bought from the that are bought from the uh, farmers are met to uh, uh, up to the quality of our standard. And in the second method is about certain inspection. We would, uh, 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 you, we would employ um, manager, manager level uh, employee to certainly check uh, on the store and about every single aspect in that store. For example, surveys. For example, uh, uh, their their attitude toward top customer and so on. And the last one is about using the methods of, of analysis customer. Uh, we may uh, we may create a program of hiring a customer and offer those customer coupon or other incentive to help us to uh, sort of evaluate the level and quality of our store. And this feedback will allow us to understand the overall uh, level or quality level of the store in China. And in the long term, we want to uh, go further by using vertical integration. We want to purchase land in China to grow our own profit beam. Uh, by using this method, we, not, uh, we are able to uh, ensure the supply of our profit beam. We, we can also ensure the quality of our profit beam. But this may impose some kinds of problem that is related to ethical ethic. Uh, because when we use uh, vertical integration, we may create uh, an employment so that uh, we may create an employment for those farmers. So we want to hire those farmers back into our uh, farming land uh, to work for Starbucks so that they can uh, have a job. And the last effort is about providing uh, the last method to ensure the quality of survey is to provide Starbucks education program to all of our employees uh, by uh, allowing them to visit foreign Starbucks in other countries, for example in the U.S., uh, to uh, 
uh, educate them about the uh, spirit of Starbucks to provide the best coffee uh, to all of our customers. And that's all of uh, uh, the part of ensuring the quality of our services. So, in addition to ensuring the quality of our service, we also want to improve the experience for our customer. Uh, we, as uh, my teammate have already mentioned, uh, all of the Starbucks look the same, right? So we want to change this kind of uh, perspective. We want to combine us with our business. For example, we want to we renovate all the store in uh, China. So that each store has its own feature. Uh, for example, we want to invite designer to design for each store so that each store has a, a special uh, feature for those customers to enjoy. And we also want to make our store more spacious and enjoyable and impressive. As my mentioned, have already mentioned, uh, it's always crowded, right? So this is one of our strategy to change that. And we also want to decorate the accessory with the local culture. For example, we want to combine the Chinese culture into our store and make our store as a uh, tourist interest so to attract more foreign customers. And that's all, all of this stuff. And I will pass to Kaido to explain the next. Thank you. Uh, our third strategy is to create a fully functional mobile app for Starbucks. So nowadays the current uh, the current version of mobile app uh, of Starbucks is quite function is quite limited. So we want to um, provide a more fully functional version. And the first of that we want to provide a function of order and pay. You know um, we can use the mobile app to order the product we want and also we can pay with uh, pay with some payment options in that app. So uh, in order to do that we will partner with some companies like Alibaba or Baidu or Tencent to to uh, provide the payment option like Alipay, WeChat Pay, etc. And also uh, in this part we can also provide a uh, service like pre-order and pre prepay. Uh, just for example, I'm a fully uh, full-time student and I and up and before I go to school I want to buy a cup of coffee in Starbucks. You know, uh, people in Starbucks are quite uh, crowded and I have to wait for the long lines and also wait for a long time for the product for the product production. So that we can use that mobile app to pre-order the product I want in mobile apps just like I said. I will arrive in, in the in your in your stop like after five minutes. So and the pre pre prepare for the product I want. So after five minutes, I go to Starbucks and can get the product I want, and uh, that can help me to get to school uh, in order to prevent uh, late. And also, um, we will provide a delivery service for our product. And in China, some companies like by uh, like Baidu, uh, Baidu and Meituan, and etc. They have a very good delivery service. So we will partner with this, this kind of third parties to help us delivery, deliver our, our product to, the, to the, our customers. And uh, just, just for example, I want to drink a cup of coffee, but the weather outside is very hot. So I just want to drink at home, and I don't want to go to Starbucks. So we can use mobile app to order, and the, the, the third party can help, help me deliver the product I want to my home, and I can enjoy the air conditioner here, and also the cup of Starbucks. Yes. And uh, in the long term, and uh, in the long term, we will use some uh, strategy and uh, some technology to help us to gain more insight about our customers. First, we will analyze the uh, first. We will collect data and uh, uh, based on the previous service, and after that, we will analyze the data using uh, machine learning to find out what is the actual habits of our customers, so that we can. So that in return we can provide a more proper service for these customers, and uh, and also we can find that um, if you want if you want to buy a cup of coffee and you just go to Starbucks and open our mobile app, the mobile app will automatically suggest the most uh, proper or most suitable product for you, so that it may help you uh, help you make the process of buying more efficiently and more effectively. And also we want to provide. Uh, there's an additional function called brand, brand calling. 
you know, in China, uh, Starbucks is not only uh, just a uh, cafe, but also it is um, it is going to be um, social place. And uh, we are, uh, in China, we will invite our friends to go Starbucks, not only to uh, enjoy the coffee, but also we can chat or communication communicate, and also we will play some famous mobile games like uh, Legend of uh, League of Legends. Yes. So if we can use that brand calling functions, um, I can use the mobile app to find that. Well, my friend Casper, he Casper he is playing mobile, playing mobile games uh, in which Starbucks. So and uh, it it will notice me automatically, and I will call him and just go to that Starbucks to play with him. So that it can help us uh, make uh, make more communication and help us more friend, uh, make more friends. And in addition, we'll provide more digital surveys such as we will offer different kinds of coupon, digital coupons based on your uh, loyalty points. You know, in Starbucks, you have some loyalty points based on your purchase. Like you pay uh, fifty uh, fifty dollars, you can get some kind of uh, some amount of uh, loyalty points, and uh, and based on that points, you can get you can um, gain some or some digital coupons. And also, we will notice. Some specific discount in special in special time. For example, like you know, uh, these days the weather very hot and the temperature outside is very high. So we may um, provide a discount like uh, thirty percent discount for you as the weather is above the like uh, thirty five uh, like above thirty five. So in that in that uh, function, the mobile app will automatically notice. Well, today the weather is above our requirement, and we will provide a certain discount just in one day. So this can help us um, and, uh, can help us attract more customers in these functions. And that is for our digital service. Uh, so let's come to the risk and the mitigation of our strategies. First of all, you know uh, now that the Chinese economy is growing um, lower than before, and also we have found that um, some successful industry like Manufacturing and uh, industrial is not very important nowadays, and uh, service industry is is going to be the most uh, important industry nowadays. And also, you can find in the case you can see that in USA, there there, uh, there was a problem called anti-branding. Uh, some some small uh, cafe they they says uh, Starbucks they you you store our customers and you also um, still are still are uh, like uh, talent, like our marketing service, and that's our risk in our strategy. So our mitigation can be the following mitigation. First, um, we will focus on the service industry and also using our digital service to provide the fourth industry. We can combine the online service and also the digital digital one. And also, um, we can see that in China, some go the government has already um, put forward some recovery plans and. Uh, and the CEO of that had already said that he believes that the Chinese, uh, the Chinese, the Chinese economy is going to be better than before. And also, we can see that uh, in in the case of the U.S. Uh, Starbucks U.S. Uh, because of the anti-brand problems, they want to uh, change the, they want to just de-branding, uh, uh, de-branding de their methods. But we can see that it's not, it's, it's not effective. So we can. So we can use that. So we, we have to, we have to in China we have to position right rightly to, to our target market to our target market and our target customers. And in before our target market is uh, the middle class in China. So then we we have to maintain that target and provide more attractive service and more attractive products to attract to appeal these customers. So that's our mitigation. Next, we will introduce the financial funds. Uh, with our strategy successfully implemented. We will receive three key benefits. First, our stores will reach to three point four, uh, sorry, uh, three thousand four hundred stores, and also uh, our transaction rate uh, will reach to forty percent, and our revenue will reach to two hundred and three uh, thirty one million dollars in year nine uh, twenty nineteen. And looking further to our stores, due to the uh, we will be able to having 70% of, of our company operating stocks and therefore our operating margin will reach to 23.1% uh, 
and then looking further to our relationship. Um, so to, com to conclude our presentation, I think there are lots of other things that we have to thank you to the Q&A session. Thank you.
uh, in addition to help ourselves by ensuring our supply of coffee bean and the quality of the coffee bean, we also want to uh, uh, do some charity thing to help those farmers to uh, um, to generate profits for their life. So that's why we want to do this medical integration. Yes. Uh, and uh, sorry. And also, we want to um, ensure the quality of the product from the roots. And this is only a, a unique situation in China because um, if we cannot control these sources, they might turn to other um, uh, other vendors uh, like uh, KFC, McDonald's, and they may um, purchase from them for a higher uh, price, and we might lose that uh, the suppliers. I think related to this uh, quality question, I had a slightly different one. Uh, you were talking about partnering with some of the third-party delivery companies in China, depending on the region of China you're in. So if you're opening this door now to a lot of third parties, um, doesn't that also increase your quality risk? And how would you manage that? So there, there must be some misunderstanding, you know. Um, we, we just want to partner with third parties to help us deliver, it, right. deliver our goods. Oh. So the delivery services... But they can drop it, they can deliver it cold, they can never show up. I mean, a lot of delivery companies have had that trouble, right? But so they have a service promise like pizza will be hot, but pizza arrives cold. That is a good question. So I think we can solve this problem by uh, by using a specific culture term. So we can maybe we can deliver another coffee for our customer to ensure the, the service. If so that service recovery, that's not quality control. Um, uh, I think that uh, this is, uh, most customers uh, are aware that uh, the, the, the product that is received, uh, whether it's good or not, uh, it depends uh, greatly on the delivery. And they, they are aware that the delivery is done by another third party, like uh, Baidu or Meituan. And they, when they complain, they're complaining the de delivery to the third party rather than Starbucks. And Starbucks already have the brand image and the, uh, the global um, high standard that we promise to uh, provide. And therefore, uh, I don't think that will be a great um, threat. Okay, so I, I will strongly disagree with that point because this is my field of business. Trust me, the brand will suffer significantly if the delivery failed because any brand is end-to-end. -end. So please keep that in mind for your future endeavors. Um, I, think, I think one other question I had surrounding your strategy. I, I really like your strategy. It's very creative. There, you've really considered many aspects. But when I look at it, except for the piece on people, you had a people piece where you were talking about cross-border and learning from other markets, and I, I don't really see you um, looking at the global aspect of the brand and really bringing that to life, because I imagine in China that's still quite a competitive advantage. Yes, in this case, we just want to focus on the Chinese market rather than the international markets. And, uh, sure. Yes. But do you have a do you have a potential risk of losing the original advantage, which is your global brand, and becoming just another Chinese brand, and therefore opening yourself up to much more Chinese competition? Yeah, in China, you know, competition is fierce, but uh, but in our strategy, we will we will stress that Spark should provide a fully functional mobile apps, and it can help us be, uh, firstly be better than other competitors, and also our. Uh, our strategy is that combining arts and the business can uh, can be differentiated from other competitors, and we believe that these two strategies can help us um, maintain our customers while also compete and beat our com competitors. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is uh, right in front of the front. You mentioned that um, you can actually start pressuring the, the suppliers so that they can lower the cost. And also, you mentioned about uh, not buying land and doing your own crops and getting the supplies in that you're employees. Is it kind of against the culture that your Starbucks has this partner with the society, being more integrated, like what they mentioned about the families and the families? And, but your, your, your strategy is it more making sure that you're protected from the outside and just go straight from the further integrations? 
and in virtual in the vertical integration, we just want to um, ensure the quality of our product. So uh, we will uh, we will also uh, employ uh, the former strategy like family family employment, uh, but also we want to vertical integrate to uh, to fully uh, to fully ensure our uh, the quality of our product is good. So uh, that is just to prevent some scandal like FC in China and some other can uh, candles. Yes. And it's not that when they become an employee, you are not um, contributing to the community. When they are part of Starbucks, um, we are also in um, giving back to, to them, providing them jobs and better, even better um, benefits for them. Um, compared to their uh, old lifestyles. What about your your product set? So do you do you see that changing? Uh, Advertisements. The product set. Have what the oh, products that you set. offer? Um, we think that uh, Starbucks uh, is already having localized um, products and also uh, all the classics. Uh, I think that um, Starbucks will continue this route and providing both um, classics and also localized products in the future. And also, they may um, provide uh, seasonal products. For example, uh, now uh, Starbucks have uh, uh, it's a uh, special uh, um, dessert for uh, the Duan uh, Festival. <laughs> On your, we saw your finance uh, slide quite rapidly, um, and, and I'm just trying to match the timeline. So you have, a, I think I, if I recall, you had a 2019 timeline for a pretty vast, massive expansion, but you're also expecting quite significant revenue growth. I mean, so you're, you're, obviously your costs will go up as you expand. So what was your logic around? <coughs> The, ex the expansion time frame and the revenue goals that you were showing? Uh, uh, first, I will show you our time lap. Currently, we will start our supervision and several payment, uh, and also uh, start uh, uh, integrating some several payment methods and also developing our unit shops. Uh, right away, and also uh, in 19, uh, sorry, 2019, our key factors to measure our uh, this strategies is to uh, uh, is the customer satisfaction rate, and also the e tra e transaction rate, uh, reaching 75 percent, also 40 percent, and also in the long term we will start our vertical integration and also the customized service and also uh, as a result in 2024 our customer satisfaction rate will reach to 83% also the transaction rate will reach to 80% and uh, we believe that due to our uh, the change rate of, uh, of our uh, store a percentage of uh, Company operated and also licensed shops in Starbucks in China. We believe that our operating margin will keep uh, increase and also uh, and also uh, as a result the revenue will. I, we believe that the revenue will keep go go up and in the long term and it will reach the, our expected. The digital service digitalization strategy is it to complement your store store growth? I mean, in terms of financial, it's not going to be double because of the two strategies, but just because of the digital, if you're asking them to go to the store. Well, well the digital the digitalization is to uh, not only attract more customers into the store, but also we can deliver uh, product into your house. Uh, like uh, I can order some product when I when I am when I'm at home, and I just think it is hot there, and I just want to. I don't want to go outside, but I want to have a cup of 
uh, Starbucks coffee. So I just use the mobile app to uh, to order to order the product I want, so that I can I can just uh, enjoy a Starbucks at home. So that strategy is to both attract more customers to the local uh, to the physical stores, but also try to attract more customers online.